I play, I grew up playing golf with my dad. It was, you know, I played very serious junior golf and then quit in high school because golf was stupid, okay. yeah, which totally. looking back is stupid. Couldn't agree like, more. It wasn't cool. People were mean to me about it. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to be a cheerleader instead, which really got a lot out of that. You didn't want to be like the nerd playing golf. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, I re- obviously regret that, but I've, I came back to the sport when I was Miss America, I got asked to play in a pro-am on the golf channel. And I was like, oh, the golf channel, this is cool. And they interviewed me and I kept doing golf stuff. I kept getting golf opportunities. After I was done being Miss America, I kept hosting pro-ams. I kept doing one-off deals. I kept growing in it. And then Miss America is the largest provider of scholarships to women in the world still to this day. I had all the scholarship money that I was gonna use on law school, Mm -hmm. decided not to go to law school. I went to USC instead, got my master's in journalism, got a phone call from the Golf Channel. Wow. Wow. And now, if you do well on the golf course, in the golf world, you get to chat with me afterwards and tell me all about it. So it's, it's part of the prize super package. super impressive stuff you just rattled off. Right. You know? Far more impressive <laughs> you than you. That's about the trajectory. That's how it, that's like the spark. So that was awesome. That was what I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> just being able to throw in, and then I was Miss America in the middle of any sort of story is an amazing, amazing thing to it's drop It's a good down. conversation it starter. Is. How's There's that, so many women in America. That, what an amazing yeah. title Miss that America. is. Thank you. Yeah. Is that it, your like most proud achievement? Um, I mean, it, it's something that will always be a part of me and define me. I hope to have many other yeah. big, amazing things happen, but it certainly changed my life. Like I had paid a deposit to go to law school and then I got exposed to, like I was giving awards at the billboards to One Direction and <laughs> like introducing Pitbull and on the like I, my first carpet ever I turned around and there's Heidi Klum walking down next to me wow. and just like you know you get exposed to this entire life that you never even knew existed and the idea of going to law school got, got yeah, I mean, credit to you, side pretty quickly credit to you for pivoting like seeing that and being like I'm gonna go do this I'm gonna get my Thanks, master's guys. from USC that's incredible yeah, yeah how'd you get into the whole world of Miss America how'd that start um so um there's a little movie called Miss Congeniality love okay. it uh, came out when I was 12 years old. Mm-hmm. I was obsessed with Sandra Bullock. I wanted to be Sandra Bullock so badly. Like she was every, still is everything to me. Um, and we got a flyer in the mail for like a local little pageant. I begged my mom to let me do it. My parents were like, "What? Like a pageant? Like no. Like why would we do that? Like we we went. We got a dress off of eBay. I looked okay. probably ridiculous. And but we went and I won the first one I ever did. <laughs> And I was like, what? you know, the golf bug bites you. It's like that, that kind of bit me. Uh-huh. But we did it once a year as like a, just a fun thing. You know, my mom always made sure to say, you know, like we're never going to do Miss America. You know, it's just not something that we're going to do. That's like a whole different thing. Like, okay, great. So it was just like a hobby. And then because of the scholarship money, I wanted to pay for school, la, la, la. Ended up just, you know, let's see what we can do. I went to school in New York and I, so I competed in New New York was Miss New York and I was like great I'll just I'll just be Miss New York it'll be fantastic you know I'll just be Miss New York it's, no it's, problem it's wonderful <laughs> <laughs> and yeah then you know the rest so wow amazing was yeah. the like incredibly demanding like people stereotype it yeah yeah sir, um, absolutely um, but it's the job itself is it's 365 days they pretty much own you for a year 20,000 miles a month. You're in a different city every two days. You're the National Goodwill Ambassador for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. I went around the world with the USO, went to Afghanistan, Bahrain, South Korea, the DMZ. DMZ, Being the president. Yeah, Yeah, I got to to meet Michelle. I didn't get to meet Obama, but but, but, yeah. That's crazy. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like you're, 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 it's like when they say you become president, the next day your life changes completely. Yeah, completely, overnight. You're brought in behind all these closed doors and you have to go to all these places. That's exactly what North America sounds like. And you get asked to play in golf tournaments. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. It's like Hunger Games. Like, you just walk through, and then all of a sudden, you're just the symbol for, like, the entire country. That's crazy. Exactly, yeah. It's really cool. It was uh, wild. Like, I look back, and I'm like, did I really do that? Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> psycho, first of all, that I would, do, like, decide to do that. But it was amazing, mm-hmm. and I learned a ton to have a much thicker skin because of it. Sure. Really mm-hmm. thankful for it. I have amazing friends. There were 25 girls that I competed with that came to my wedding. Wow. Um, is so, that right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like everybody from Georgia to Colorado to pretty much our state in between. Wild. Yeah. That's really cool. What a world. Um, okay. So then you're in, you know, journalism. You're studying journalism. Yeah. You ha- you get a call. Or what happened with, with, you know, Golf Channel and becoming How did this happen? You want more, more in tr- Yeah, just a little bit more. More details like, of how this happens? Okay. So, so I feel like this stuff just keeps happening to you or all of a sudden it changes your life. <laughs> 
Yes. Okay. So, um, have you ever had that feeling when like you're going along something and it's not exactly happening the way you want. It's not exactly happening the way you want. You start to doubt all the time and like, maybe I'm going to start thinking about something else. Yeah. So I have that feeling about two years post Miss America. Like what am I doing with my life? Like, am I, am I just going to host pro-ams for forever? Like what, what am I doing? Like I really wanted to start getting into like legit reporting, but you have to have experience and like, you know, more things than just having been Miss America to right. get to be a reporter. Um, I got a phone call one day completely randomly from the USGA. They needed somebody to host their digital coverage. I'd been doing some digital stuff and they took a complete like risk on me and they're like, yeah, like you were Miss America, the United States Golf Association seems to go well together. Like, let's figure this out. I worked, uh, Shinnecock was my first US Open with them and it was like a life changing, like, okay, I, I want to do this type of thing. Yeah. And the USGA gave me the experience and the time to grow as a personality, as a reporter. They let me make mistakes. They let me try stuff out. They let me do pretty much whatever I wanted. I'm sure you guys have had uh, a lot of great opportunities with the USGA. You've gotten to do me? some. Love the USGA. Shinnecock was our first USGA. First Open. time. We, we, basically so we go way back. Same trajectory. <laughs> yeah. We were like, what are we doing here? I can't like believe they got, allowed us to be here. They yeah. let our boss uh, try and win the US Open with unlimited mulligans. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I remember that was a whole conversation. They mm-hmm. are very open to things like that. Like you're saying, they give you chances to do whatever you want, try new stuff. Yeah. Like you wouldn't, like from the outside looking in, you wouldn't think that was going to be an organization that would do that. But they actually are very open to it. They are. I mean, it's it's about democratizing the game and right. making it more accessible, more relatable to the masses, not just you know those that can qualify to compete at the U.S. Open. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because of what I was doing there, and I, I had done some one-off things with the Golf Channel, I just kept getting more opportunities with the Golf Channel. I hosted Golf Advisor for them, which is a, a, like a travel lifestyle show that which, which went away during COVID. Mm-hmm. But that was kind of like my entree into like the greater Golf Channel sphere. Um, and then January of 2020, I got to do live reporting at the PGA show. That was my first time to be like really doing that. Like a, someone's counting down in your ear, like, let's go. This is live TV. And then COVID happened. Mm. So for most of COVID, I was, I started school. I was like, okay, whatever. Like, we'll see what happens. I still got my USGA stuff. Tried to not put too much pressure on it. And mm-hmm. then end of 2020 in December, they called and said, hey, we have a reporter position. Do you want it? And like, yep. I wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Shout out to Craig Annis, by the way. Yeah. He's not there any longer at USGA, but. Yeah, Craig guy. was amazing for my career. He, he said yes to a lot of uh, He's a lot of big stuff. For Absolutely me, so. amazing. Yeah, um, do you get nervous? 